and that's why he wanted me, a non-Jewish person, writing it, because he only wanted his story told. There were plenty of people, as you could say, who were writing the story of the Holocaust. You write my story. And now you might say, well, how, you know, how selfish of, us, of it is he to say, I want my story told. But he never, he never really saw it that way, and, and I didn't either. So for 50 years plus, I think, well, I know that he and Peter actually, they didn't live with it per se. He told me that they made a pact. Mm. The only way they could remember and honour all those people who didn't survive was to have the best life they could. And in Gita's um, sense, she, that meant totally never speaking about it again. And Lali got on with his life, and it was only when she died that it came back to him, and it came back to him in this you know, really, really horrible way in some ways, and uh, in terms of became the burden that he'd carried for 60 years. Yeah. And he had to then live with that. And I believe from what he said and uh, from what his son ultimately said to me and unburdening to me, he found a sense of peace. Yeah. He came to terms with all that drama, the pain, the guilt, and, yeah, the survivor guilt. He had it. They all, every survivor I met had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and he managed to come to a place where Lali was now happy in his being and we had these amazing three years together. The night Lali died, the last thing I said to him when I kissed him goodbye, knowing I would never see him again, was that I would never, ever stop trying to tell your story. I made that promise to a man and he died two hours later. And I just kept trying and um, told his story. Simple, really. Well, for me it is.